respond to meeting the order at 6 30. <laughs> do we have any additions to the agenda i don't see any on the Select board memo, not a review of minutes, November 20th, 23. Thank you for sending me that contact information for Mr. Chamberlain. I forgot about it too. So. Well, I was I've got a schedule meeting to do that. Yeah, I know. So. No kidding. Yeah. Gina, when do you normally post the annotated agenda? Whenever I get it. It's on. usually like that morning or the. Yeah, it's usually like pretty short. It wasn't there this morning. Now. Okay. It's usually in the afternoon, okay. on Monday of the meeting. If not, like at five o'clock okay. before the meeting. No, fine. I'm just asking. Yeah. When I... no. There's, okay, it's never before this one. Is that a red level agenda? This one? I'll make a motion to accept the minutes. Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I don't hear a second. I can't I say guess anything. We, I guess we don't move on for a while. Well, we can't until we get a second. <laughs> but thank you for the second. Second. We need a second. We're not. I'll second it. Thank you. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Okay. For the <laughs> it doesn't mean it ended. We're not, we're not voting on it. Are you also allowed two seconds? I am, but since I sub respectfully submitted the minutes, I thought it would be <laughs> a <laughs> one made a second. Yeah. Yeah. The second. Now. <laughs> Now, I, 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 I read them twice. <laughs> yeah, they're fantastic. Um, so now, uh, is there further discussion about the minutes? Actually, yes. Uh, oh, very good. Uh, yeah, I have a, a question oh, for you. Uh, I did something for me, uh, oh. for all of you. Uh, I just happened to be looking in the direction, but that was a you were, you were, yeah, yeah you were yeah. looking glaring. I mean, you were looking at me. <laughs> I, I did something a little bit different in these minutes than yeah. I have in the past. And that, um, when somebody was making a, an extended presentation to us, rather than say, you know, they said this, and they added that, and so on, then I just uh, put a paraphrase of what they said and then indented the whole block. Um, and I'm wondering, is that clear? Is that helpful? What do you guys think? Looks clear to me. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Bre brevity is wonderful. Mm -hmm. Brevity is wonderful. And it's easier to read. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, and they're a little, don't you think they're, I don't know, you think they're a little shorter? No. I think the minutes are great. Yeah. No, they're fine. I was just wondering about the length of them. It's the longest minutes long. that we've seen for a yeah, while, yeah, but on the other hand, we had a lot of discussion. Would you, would you yeah. like to see more detail? It's a lot of work. No. Oh. No. I do not need to see more detail. <laughs> I mean, it's a novel, novella at this point. Right. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Okay, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Um, so, is there further discussion on the minutes of November twentieth? Are there any corrections? If there are none, then we could make a motion to accept the minutes. We already have, and it's been seconded. Oh, that's why we did make the motion. Yeah. So we and now we get call. Mm -hmm. If there's no more discussion, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it. They do have it. All right. We're done on that. The next thing that we have is public comment. Is this lady here for public comment? Uh, I'm actually with Central Home Health and Hospital. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And That's we fine. do have, is, is there a member of the public on the Zoom? Uh, Paul, I think he's probably here for the uh, funding request study committee report. Okay. Yes. Yes. Oh, yep. Yep. Okay. So no public comment. Um, 640, we're a little ahead of schedule on, but presentation of funding request study committee report. And I guess, and that, I guess that, that, that is I, um, and I don't know why my, uh, video isn't working, but, uh, I am here. Um, but you, can you hear me? Can you hear my audio? Yes. Yeah, uh, we can hear for, you very for well. The, for the record, Paul, would you state your, your name? Sure. Paul 
Earl Baum, and I am a member of the Funding Request Committee. Um, and uh, I, I can make a bit of a presentation, but I know that you've received something in writing, so I don't want to um, repeat stuff you already know, but I certainly am here to answer any questions you might have, or I can make a little presentation. I uh, no, I think we can read the um, changes that's that we have. Mm -hmm. And I, I was just wondering on the the organizations that did not reach out, is that just because they didn't want money this year? Some so. didn't have the capacity to do it. for those that did respond, like one person told me they were very tied up with FEMA and oh. they just simply did not have time. Okay. And that was kind of the consistent thing that happened last year when people didn't submit as well. Right. Just didn't have the capacity to do it. Yeah. And what's the deadline? It's already passed, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like Washington County Mental Health Services, I can't believe they didn't. Uh, yeah, it was March. October 20th, and I reached out to people to follow yeah. back up. Okay. Yeah. yeah it's, okay. And then I have a question about something that's not in the report, I assume because no, uh, they weren't in touch with the funding request study committee, but the Vermont Rural Fire Protection Task Force town appropriation is on our agenda for a little later on. And apparently we've given them money in the past. That, 2021 is so I looked in our history and our yeah. financial records yeah. for 2021. Okay. I, had it, had, I, I didn't go back and research. I'm not our sure if it went to the funding request that. study committee though. I did not look at that. I just looked yeah. at accounts payable to see yeah. when it, when they were last paid. It seems like it's something that may, may be appropriate through the funding. Yeah, request and they came committee. in just Future. very recently. Uh -huh. So that was something. Yeah, they that, missed the deadline by a lot. Yeah. Uh, so let's finish up with Paul though. Yeah. We'll get sidetracked here. Sure. Uh, I'll just ask Paul, um, do you recall? Ever hearing of anything from the Vermont Rural Fire Protection Task Force in the past on the funding request committee? I I do not remember uh, hearing anything from them. No. Okay. Um. So Paul is here available. Who's got questions for him? Scott. Um. Uh, no. Everything is pretty much clear. I want to. Thank you for the Community Harvest of Central Vermont, giving them a few more bucks um, than last year, which is wonderful. I'm, I'm, on the, I'm on their board and I volunteer and they're a lean, a lean, a lean machine. Okay, the, so you need to recuse yourself from this vote, it sounds like. For that, well, I'm on the board and a yeah. contributor, but was that, why would I have to recuse myself? I'm not getting any compensation yet. No, I <laughs> I think it's a, a borderline case when it's you know one out of uh, thirty or so organizations. Well, it would be yeah, and, I, and and in fact uh, we aren't making a decision. On it. We're just yeah. making a decision on putting it before the voters. And I don't receive any. I mean, if we receive services from yeah. some of these organizations, that's about the same thing. Yeah, exactly. You reduce yourself sure. because you go to and I don't library, <laughs> mental health services, right? And, yeah, and I don't yeah. receive any services from yeah. them. I write a big check. Exactly. But I don't, right. Yeah. Yeah. right. Yeah. It was mostly tongue in cheek. Oh, I, I think I, I'm misunderstanding something, but so Twin Valley hasn't asked for funding. No, they do. Since they're separate. Separate. Okay, that's what I. Because they uh, put uh, it out. Twenty five thousand. How much was? What's the total? Maybe that, I'm not reading. Item. The total that yeah. they got. Did you read the, uh, the town meeting? Yeah. There's a line there. Well, if yeah, if you saw that, six. it's one of the line. All favor, so the matter. That's what. When we get to Paul. Yes. Um, just from what I understand, oh, I right the committee has recommended funding any every organization that asked for money at the amount that they asked for. If, am I getting that right, or did I miss something? No, I, I I believe that every organization that asked we found to be worthy. Right, and you gave them the amount they asked for. What Carl uh, saying? I think that I think this year we actually did give every. Body, what they asked for, yeah, yes. okay. and, and yeah, the the requests were modest, you know, given inflation and the extra demand. They were, yeah, right. I mean, sometimes they've had to meter out the money, you know, mm. according to request. They didn't always give the full amount mm. in the past, right? Because right. they pushed it up over the exactly twenty five. But and what one. 
thing. I'd be curious to hear about your discussion uh, about the Vermont Bar Foundation, and that's something, given your career history, you might have some special insight into, I'm not sure. Uh, but we gave them money for the first time a couple of years ago, and it was a substantial appropriation, $1,500. And then they came back, they didn't come back the next year, last year. And now they've come back and they've, they've asked for $500 more than that. And $500 is more than the total we give to a lot of these organizations. So uh, could, could you tell us about your conversation around the Vermont Bar Foundation? Sure. Um, what they do is they fund legal aid, the legal services, the free yeah. legal assistance around the state. Um, and uh, a person came, you know, made a pitch um, and, uh, you know, frankly convinced me um, that they could really use the money. Uh, I, I know in, in years past, referring people to legal aid, um, legal aid is great and they really could really use some more staff. Um, uh -huh. so I, I found, it, you know, and I guess others on the committee agreed that um, it, it was worth the investment in them. It was a big request and worth it, I think. Thank you. And they said there's 148 residents, which is a lot. I mean, that's a huge that's a lot. percentage that I would not I would never have expected. Um, they would be aiding that many of our residents, right. which is just great. Unfortunately. Yeah. <clears throat> Any other questions? Would you, would you like a motion, Mr. Chairman? Sure. I'll make a motion to accept the funding, accept the uh, funding request study committee's recommendation to put in actually, front of the actually, Yeah. Um, we don't actually have to do that. No, no. No, we just have to actually say, yeah, this, this is great. And then when it comes time for the warning for town meeting, there's, there's no vote on it. We have one big yeah, vote, vote on the whole board. Yeah. I withdraw, I withdraw yeah. my motion. Yeah. Good. I think we're good. Yeah. Thank you for all that work, Paul. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul. And thank, and thank you, folks. Take good care. Thanks so thank much. You. Thank you committee for us. Take care. Mm -hmm. Um so next thing on our agenda is consideration of winter road policy. Yeah. What's that? It's normally done before now, but sorry. Overlooked it. I am okay with the winter roads policy. I would like it not to say town of Highgate on the document. It has had that for probably the last decade. Can we change that? I, it? I yeah. when at some point yeah. I will put it at the bottom of my list. <laughs> so that is a document I inherited. Yeah. It's when you click it open on the website, it's yeah. embedded in the document that, yeah. groups that I inherited from Bruce. Something. Along with many other documents on the website that have very odd words that come up when you click. Something, something so. in the PDF it metadata. And I think you know, for the purposes of anybody who might be watching this later on, it's just worth emphasizing that uh, we uh, we do not have a, a clear roads policy. That we, we take time to clear our roads. Okay. Um, we should make a motion to adopt. Sure. Make a motion to accept the town of East Montpelier Highway Road 23-24 Winter Operations Plan. Second. Did you, did you I said second. second. Yeah. Second. Is there further discussion on the motion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 It's good to have it. Okay. We're a little bit early because Central Vermont Home Health and Hospice. Are you expecting more people? Uh, yeah, Sandy Roos. Oh Bruce yeah. CEOs. So we can we can just fit something else in. Okay. Did you sign in by the way? Oh, I did not. There's a sheet right over there. It'd be great if you could sign in. Thank we you. talk about the next motion or uh, the next item: consideration of invitation for Vermont 250th anniversary resolution. Mm -hmm. it looks like there's two different ways we can handle this. Yeah, the state 
gave an optional yeah. paragraph. Yeah. So I, yeah, thank you. The two different versions of it, and it all it says is you may you obligate may. funding yes. and say you are. So I'll make a recommendation to accept the we may fund. I read, yeah. I read it. It's, it's very easy. It's at our discretion. Yeah, we don't have to exclude ourselves. Right, if we want to. That's what I thought you would do, but yeah, is that on, eight yeah, specific is that a lot that they would. There's, it doesn't. It doesn't say anything. It just says okay, we can spend money if we want to. Okay, and the other one yeah doesn't say anything about money. That sounds good. I think we have something to sign here. Yeah, you have the two parameters there. Yeah, you want to can. Nobody, you want to tell us about your conversation with yeah. the um, historical committee? Yeah. Reason to the point that they are interested in participating. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Cool. Very good. Okay. I think we need a motion to do the funding option. I just I made the motion. Okay. For the for the that one line where it says we may fund. Yes. Okay. We have to sign this. And we also so you're making the motion. No. Yeah. Okay. Do we need, do we need a vote on this? We're just gonna sign. Yeah. So, I, I guess we don't we do. need a motion. Yeah. We're just gonna sign it. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we don't need a motion, but we're gonna no, sign it. We're the signing yeah. will be your we'll be okay. All right. Discussion ensued. Is there any more discussion on this? No. Okay. Hopefully not. Are you suggesting that we shorten discussion time? <laughs> well, <laughs> Thank you. Oh, oh you can you can be unless, you can be blunt unless it's necessary. You're being recorded, but well, that's why I'm not going to be. <laughs> You're going to be Clorox bubbling. Um, okay, I'll be Clorox. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that took care of the appropriation discussion on Central Vermont. No, no, we haven't done that yet. Consider it. Okay, we did the invitation for Vermont twenty and twenty. 250th anniversary resolution. We're still a little bit early. <clears throat> yeah. Well, that's going to take a while, though, isn't it? We've already seen the schedule. Okay, you know, we can talk about our. If you know, if you just want to, if you want to move things along. Why don't we just? Um, we'd like to make a motion to um, consideration of the Vermont our 810 item. I'd like to make a motion to. Ex, uh, appropriate the hundred dollars for the consult the consideration of the Vermont Rural Fire Protection Task Force Town Appropriation, which is a whole whopping hundred bucks. Yeah, and you can deliberate uh, that for a while. But I, I, I already read about it. Um, I saw that Phoenix sent out know, in a fund the dry hydrant program. Yeah, which is we we've done it in East Montpelier. It's well, it's a good thing to do. So that's I why I didn't think we needed. Like the well, you know, there's other members of the select board that may want to discuss this. Program. Well, no, 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 absolutely. That's why I'm bringing this up. Yes. The last payment was in November of 2021. Looking at the fiscal 22 funding request study committee, it was not on there. So I don't believe it ever has gone through that committee. And it had been paid here right. previous as well when yeah. I was in Emmerich and looked at historical payments to this organization. Uh -huh. So I'm not sure. I didn't go delve into minutes of how you. Well, I'm going to spend more than $100 doing all I mean, it can be a select board decision to give them $100. Bucks. Yeah, well, not we, did, we did have a discussion some years ago when, let's see, there was some organization, I think, that came to the funding request committee and was denied funding and then came back to the select board. Isn't that how it worked? But, I mean, we, we made a decision that we wanted people whose level of funding and whose mission qualified for being funded through the... $25,000 from the funding request committee. We wanted them to go there rather than to the select board. Otherwise, we get all these $100, $300 requests. And that's the whole reason we set up the committee is to evaluate those for us. Well, you didn't run well, this through the committee. In yeah, it's never been run. I don't believe in any years prior. To right. that, I don't so, this particular payment was ever run through that process. So do we want to um, approve it and suggest that uh, request that they go through that process in the future? and? Put them on the list to get the email next year. I'm I'm not thinking that we should because this is something that we we can commit to without uh, the school committee. I mean, this is part of our fire. 
hmm. plan. That's why yes. Steph sure. actually saw this. I emailed the fire department yeah. because I wasn't yeah. sure when I received this I, how this had come through. I totally agree with you because I wouldn't want to see. Yeah. Of course, it's not going to get voted down. No. But, but it's but it's critical and crucial yeah. that we should not not have it approved. Exactly. If if, 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 the, if the select board would if the select board doesn't um doesn't feel this is worthwhile, that we are the more more we have more expertise, yeah. then we should vote, we should not vote for it. So I, I, I agree with you rather than Carl's argument. Then going in, I don't think this has to be better, in my opinion. Right, right. My right. mission is yeah. to protect citizens. And if they put in a hydrant, which they have, and I, they I think that's, their, that's a great point. That, that's that. what we need to keep doing. That's right. That's part of our mission to protect our citizens. So it's I, not I, I, yeah. I agree. So, it shouldn't go to the committee. Yeah. Oh, so putting it through the committee would decrease its chance. You're saying it would decrease its chances of actually. There is, it's a long shot. There could be somebody on the committee could say, I don't like this. Or somebody, or, on, the or some, or somebody on the floor yeah. when it comes up for a vote and they say, right. I don't like the color red. So we pull it off. Yeah. But it's pretty unlikely, right? Just it's unlikely, it. but I it's understand. I, it also crowds out the other organizations that are already at the hundred dollars away. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So somebody made the motion? I did. Did somebody make you made the second then? Or did no, you? you didn't. I didn't know. Oh, I'll okay, second. Second. oh you're gonna second that. Okay. Is there further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, we're still a couple minutes early. So gone. I know we're happening is somewhat quick, I think, if you would like to tackle that. What's that? Avenue. Oh, uh, Avenue, yeah. It's the 805 item. Um yes. essentially Rosie was contacted by Avenue that yep. they're they have a new cloud-based version and asked if we would like to switch from housing server and different things here and moving over to a cloud-based system. It's no change in cost. Yeah. However, a huge benefit and that now, you know, sometimes we have issues with our server yeah. or we have issues with, so it's now going to be cloud-based. Any updates, Rosie will have issues sometimes when an update, the update comes through. It will yeah. be cloud-based. It's no additional cost to the town. Good. Um, will enhance uh, remote connectivity if Rosie ever needed to in a disaster. Um, right now, it's she can't really connect um, the land record system remotely. So um, that's made perfect sense to me. That's make, a contract make. division to switch to the cloud based system. And FYI, RB Tech was the room about this as well because this is another difficult part of maintaining our IT infrastructure because we kind of have these two different systems housed in the building and it would make life a lot easier for them as well. Would it save money for us? No, it's, no the cost it's is the No, I, I understand for this particular line item, but in other ways, might it save money? We have we talked last time or the time before about server upgrade costs. Is it going to reduce the need for a server upgrade? Well, these types of servers, this is all through Avenue. There's, it's a completely separate system that's maintained here. So no, not not really. So but Avenue has hardware on site, right? right. So that we use separate yes. from everything else. Yes, okay. Okay. yeah. Yes. And that was all part of that contract. Uh, now we're switching to the cloud based. And we have a motion to this? Yeah, because I would need, the, I would need yeah. to accept this quote. I'm just curious. Okay. The quote is nothing. So it's well, but it's a contract revision. We have to sign oh, uh, yeah. an amendment to the contract. Right. Yeah. So just on the cloud. The question is, does it change security? Yeah. No, not really. It's the same. It's, yeah. Encrypted as. Yeah, right into a it makes it more resilient in case of a yeah, it really does. Yeah, and, and back up and exactly. Your server melts in some way. Yeah, sitting in that. Cloud. I mean, I assume that we have offsite backup anyway. Is that correct? I don't know the answer to this avenue, but I would imagine. Okay, I'd like to make the motion to accept the avenue contract revision for cloud based services. Second, second. Carl, second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Do I agree to have it? do have it. I take care of that. Okay. Back to the 655 item, or 7 o'clock item, actually. Can we do that? Because I think Sandy's here. Yeah. 
Thank We're you. ready to rock and roll Good, on the appropriations discussion in Central Vermont Home Health and Hospital. Oh, skip me around so much. Come on, Dan. Come on. Yes, we only have it. Okay. So I think I know several of you, but I'm not sure if I know everyone. My name is Sandy Roos. I'm the CEO of Central Vermont Home Health and Hospice. I love coming to the select board because I always feel like we're so engaged and so aware of our services, which is really awesome. Mm -hmm. um, I'm here today with Kelly Finnegan, and Kelly is actually our um, fundraising and development team, and she oversees all of the town funding, um, all the application submissions, letters of request, communicating, with the contacts and point to the accounts and supporting me in um, doing this work and coming to the select boards. Great. Thanks for coming. We can introduce ourselves if you want. Sure. Oh, that would be wonderful. We have Nate. We do. I have been so you're fairly new. Yeah. Um, and I haven't met Scott either. Oh, you don't. Yeah, Bill, I was selected last March. <laughs> You too. This is Carl. Carl and I are helpful to say my the pronunciation of my last name. Can I know that. Yes. Great. Great. Thank you. So um, I'm going to start off. I think everyone pretty much knows our mission. So I'm, I'm not going to really do that. But I am going to um, go to the page where it talks about care for all these Montpelier residents and just kind of highlight um, our service area for those of you that don't know is all of Washington County and three towns in Orange County, Williamstown, Orange, and Washington. Um, across our service area, we see about 2,500 patients, um, about 600 patients on service daily. Doesn't mean we see all those patients on any one given day, but they're active on our service and receiving um, something through programs. We have 23 communities in our service area. All of those communities um, have uh, contribute to us through town funding, whether we're on the ballot, whether it's voted on the floor, um, whether it's part of the budget. And our clinicians drive lots of miles during the year. So, and for East Montpelier it's specifically, um, this year we've done close to, or this past year we've done close to 1,700 visits and 78 patients served. Want to tell you a little bit about um, the volume. This past year, we've seen about a 72% increase in hospice visits, a 71% increase in long-term care visits. And those um, long-term care visits are those individuals that are home, that may be um, disabled, frail, older adults, that really um, there are things that we do for them to keep them at home, kind of those, those non-personal care type things through their laundry, their groceries, um, their respite and companion hours, um, clean their home and things like that. So it can really keep them independent in their home and out of the facility for as long as possible or out of having to move in with a family member or whatnot. Yep. Have you seen those increases for East Montpelier residents too? Yes. Yeah, so those specifically are oh, for, for East Montpelier, 72% increase. Yes. Wow. yes. And um, there was a for, for wait, uh, oh, yeah. last 12 months. So this is December 2023. Yeah. So that's so, November yeah. through. Yeah, so it was actually, um, I did January through November and then I ran it um, 12 1 through November yeah. 30th to yeah. kind of match it up. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So, and I know the numbers that we sent you are based on a little different because it's earlier in the year. So, we just kind of finish up. Um, we've seen a significant increase in the family and child health program by 200%. So, that's really a program that more and more families are accessing. It's um, primarily Medicaid funded programs, but some private insurances do have um, some a certain amount of visits once a mom has had a baby, there's lactation support, et cetera. So um, lots of lots of increases. Overall, since 2015, um, we've seen about a 37% increase in visits. In total visits? And overall visits. Overall, yeah. Yeah. So um, on the next page, enhancing quality of life for you and your family. So this past year, we actually started a new service line. And it's called our palliative care consultative service. 
Um, really, we decided to start this service because of the complexity of the patients that we see primarily in our home health program. Um, and our home health program is really focused on those individuals that have medical necessity, care that needs to be provided by a nurse or a physical therapist or any one of the rehab therapies, um, a licensed nurse's aide, um, medical social worker, um, et cetera. So, so we found that there's lots of complexities. Um, individuals have multiple chronic diseases that have progressed significantly. And um, lots of times they're going back and forth to the hospital and some are saying, I don't wanna go to the hospital anymore. What do I do? So we hired a full-time nurse practitioner. She is running this particular program. And ultimately she's working with those individuals and in not only um, supporting individuals, but also supporting our staff that are seeing these patients in other programs to really figure out how, you know, what are your goals of care? Have you done advanced care planning? You know, have you completed cults forms? Do you have any sort of, for, for lack of better words, living will? What are your wishes? So um, Kelly has really been able to offer a, a wide array of services and really work with those individuals in their home to really talk about those illnesses that may be presenting them like limiting situations um, and really kind of not so good quality of life. Um, some of the things I'm just gonna highlight in the bulleted, um, she coordinates care with the provider and the existing healthcare team. So Kelly currently right now is a service in a program of one. Um, she works very closely with our other teams but ultimately what she is doing is she is meeting with individuals and providing these consultations to work with them on um, goals of care, advanced care planning, et cetera. But also her team is actually their existing care team. So we're not duplicating efforts. So if she, you know, certainly coordinating with their primary care physician or a specific physician that may be overseeing their care currently, and also if they have um, a special relationship within the faith community, how are they leaning on that? If they um, already are connected with a social worker, lots of times if somebody is receiving period treatment, like at the cancer center, there's a social worker embedded in their team that they may be connected with. So really utilizing that healthcare team and then also trying to connect them with other community resources they may not be accessing and need. So the goal is to really not Add, but it's to enhance what exists and really help them and provide them um, that support and, and also provide them emotional support through this process and really help them sort through where do you want to be when you are done with your period of treatment? Where do you want to be um, based on where you're at with your chronic disease? Um, these individuals, like uh, I have said, continue to seek curative treatment. You know, potentially lots of them are having chemotherapy, radiation, other types of dialysis, different things like that. Um, and it's really, there's no home bound status requirement. So a lot of, if you know home health, you'll hear, oh, you have to be home bound. A lot of people say, I don't want to do that. I don't want to be home bound. I don't want to be able to go out. That's a Medicare eligibility thing. And it's for our home health program, but it's not for this program. And you don't have to be on another program to be able to access this palliative care consultative service. And actually Kelly um, Elwell grew up here. She was a PCA at our organization, a personal care attendant. She worked on the long-term care team. She went to nursing school. She worked at some of the local provider practices at CDMC, moved to Florida for maybe five years, worked in an oncology unit. Um, proceeded to get her nurse practitioner, and then she got her doctor of nursing practice, and she's back at CDHHH. So it's mm -hmm. kind of an awesome story, and she lives in the Manford Valley. So uh, then I want I wanted to bring up the new service, and I just wanted to talk very briefly on um, the services that we've seen an increase in your service area, just to kind of refresh what it is, and uh, talk a little bit about um, our one is our hospice services. And really we focus on what matters most when it matters most. Um, lots of times individuals that we're working with, when they start saying, I don't wanna go back to the hospital. Well, what does that mean? 
And are there other interventions that can take place that can prevent that? Or if it's just a matter of your chronic disease is truly progressing, then is hospice a better program to serve you? If you're in a situation where you're not seeking curative treatment, um, you really don't want to go back to the hospital. You really want to focus on quality of life and doing certain things, knowing that this is pretty much a life limiting illness and your end of life journey is coming sooner than, than later, so to speak. Um, and it's, this care is available wherever someone resides. So wherever they call home, and that can be at a skilled nursing facility, at a hospice facility, and some, sometimes it's actually in the hospital. Um, we found that individuals sometimes have had a, a lifelong illness. Um, my father happened to be one of them. And all of a sudden, you know, could not do any more, ended up in the ED, presented. There was nothing really that could be done pretty much close to end of life. And we can admit that patient onto hospice, which does a couple different things. So that actually allows the family and caregivers to access bereavement support for 12 months after their loved one has passed away. So it gives them that extra support. In addition to that, it also works with the family. Any one of our team has to go over every day to the hospital to see that patient. And it'll, you know, lots of times there are family dynamics, people are under crisis, they need that extra support by a medical social worker, potentially by a chaplain, and just to have that additional oversight by nursing staff. I'm really coordinating their care and um, overseeing their plan of care. That's a really specific incident where an individual can't really be managed at home. So it may be like their pain and symptoms or something is happening with their disease process where they couldn't have hospice at home because we couldn't manage that level of care at home. So small population, but certainly at a time where there are lots of needs and, and providing that benefit of grief and support and grief support up to 12 months. Um, talk a little bit about the interdisciplinary hospice team. And um, I'll give you an example of a couple of things. Uh, one, Pamela Byron, who I believe lives in Montpelier, um, she was honorary chair of our fall annual appeal. Um, her husband passed away on our hospice service, I think it's almost a couple of years ago now. So um, she was very generous to be able to tell her story and, and it was quite impressive. Um, and then I was talking to a good friend whose husband was on hospice, um, just probably in September. And I called her just to check in, not just as the CEO of the agency, but as a friend, but also just wanting to check in how are the hospice services going, what's happening in the home, is it living up to your expectations? And we got to talking and I was talking to her about so what would you and your husband really like to do? Because I could tell they just felt like stuff. And these are really people that were on the go, always doing things, big family, et cetera. And she said, well, you know, I don't know. And I said, well, part of hospice is really working and, and helping you and your family and especially the patient achieve quality of life. Like, what are those things you want to do maybe for the last time? And their wish was, we want to go to New Hampshire. We want to have all the family around. They wanted to go to some particular resort, but we can't because we can't get my husband's pain under control. And I said, so that's what you need to talk to your nurse about. That's what I'm going to talk to the hospice manager about because we want you to be able to do that. So it was really a matter of how could we get his pain control in a, in a portable place mm -hmm. so that he could go spend this weekend with his, his kids, his wife, and his grandkids. And that happened within the week. And they were able to do that. And that's the last time he did that. Then he wanted to go to this college basketball game because they were in the NCAAs. So we worked with them to be able to get him to do that. So those are the things that hospice actually really focuses and works on. And then he wanted to go skydiving. And then, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know very well. So what's he doing now? Yeah, it's like, oh, well, it's going to do this. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, but you know, it's things like that that make you really realize that you know, if it's going to that graduation or or going to that birthday party, um, and maybe that's the last one I'm going to go do, then you know, that's that's what the team is working with the patient and family on. Um, 
And then the last thing was our, it, it's been called our maternal and child health program, but the state changed the name to the family and child health program. It's primarily Medicaid funded. Like I said, there is some, some private insurance. And we have a couple different efforts um, that continue from prior year, um, one with this uh, perinatal collaborative pilot and working with our OBGYN practices um, and having some of our nurses, and that's why it says MCH, maternal and child health, um, work with individuals and conduct some of those visits that are part of the nor normal planning process of um, an expected mom. So we kind of go in, we work with the team in the practice, we focus on uh, social determinants of health for that individual and making sure when they have that child, what is it going to look like? What, is, what needs do they have that's going to really support them as a new family and really working um, together to try to bring that child into a good world and really support that mom, mom and dad or mom and partner in that journey. And then another program um, is really focused on supporting families through transitioning to parenthood and also following um, that child and their growth um, in many different areas through the age of two. And then we have another program that follows them through the age of five. So there's really kind of that longer term support for those individuals. And I actually access just the broader um, maternal and child health and random high risk pregnancy. So. I think our history, um, we won't go over that too much. We have a long history with the support of the town of East Montpelier. We feel very fortunate. Like I said, I really do enjoy being able to talk about the work we're doing. And a little bit about why we need um, town funding. Very similar to last year, Medicare is our um, primary care source. They continue to cut our service, our, our reimbursement significantly. Um, which is really unfortunate because all you hear about is how we're going to move care into the community. It doesn't align. It does not make sense. Um, we just recently got another cut, um, and there are more to come. Um, so yeah. when you say cut reimbursements, could you tell us what that means? Does that mean that they are eliminating reimbursements for certain types of care, or just no. that they're so reducing for, the percentage? For care Home Health, which is our largest program, we get paid based on a period of care. So for a 30 or 60 day period of care. Mm -hmm. So what they do is they they basically just cut off that payment. So um, last year it was close to 7%. This past year it was bought in, in Washington and it became a really big thing with um, our advocacy organizations. And they said they were gonna cut another 7%. So they did 4% and they'll do the rest in the following year. So um, they're going based on data that is from, it's several years old, and they're saying, well, people are making a profit on Medicare, so we have to cut that back because that's not what it's for. Mm -hmm. But inevitably, if you look at the agencies in Vermont, nobody is making a profit on Medicare. That we rely on contributions and fundraising, town funding, the United Way, um, kind of all the other things that we do. So um, all the agencies in Vermont. So even with inflation, they're not, they don't have an inflation. They they give us an inflation pack. Oh, they do. They, they do what's called a behavioral adjustment and they reduce it. So it ends up negative. Yeah. <laughs> so is the 4% included in the inflation? Or yes. is it, that's the net change. That's a net change. That's the net change. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It doesn't make a lot of sense. It doesn't. And um, it's really hard to unwind. Uh, obviously, I think all employers um, are dealing with significant wage increases and workforce shortages. Yeah, yeah. This past year was the first time in my 21 years at the agency that we've experienced having to um, reduce the amount of referrals we took in, in May and June. Um, we didn't have enough nursing staff to safely take on patients for our home health program. Yeah. We could take them on if it was like a physical therapy only order from a doctor. Yeah. Oh. Um, we were taking hospice, long-term care, all our other programs, um, but we did have to reduce that. And currently um, we are continuing to take referrals, but not able. Normally our referral sources are used to admitting within 24 hours. Um, and now sometimes it's a little bit longer than that. We have to triage depending on the level of acuity they are and, and what their needs are. Oh. Due to staffing shortages, we continue to use traveling clinicians. Mm -hmm. um, I say we probably 
fire at least one or two um, every couple months. <laughs> <laughs> and it's really disruptive when you are counting on someone for a 13 week assignment and they're only get there that half the time for a lot more money. Yes. So, um, and I think a lot of healthcare is nationally is suffering with that model. So how are these people who are making money off of Medicare doing it? Um, most of them are for profit yeah. agencies and so they can pick and choose the type of patient they take. Uh, um, in the state of Vermont, we're considered a designated agency. So if we get a referral with a doctor's order, we can't just refuse to take that referral unless we don't have staff to perform the service safely, which is a Medicare conditions of participation and the regulatory. Um, we actually have to accept the referral. And the only time we can't take it on is if for some reason there may be an imminent safety injury, um, safety issue where maybe it was a prior client and we know there were safety issues for our staff and or we can't provide the care necessarily. Mm -hmm. But most of the time you do have to take it. Yes. And believe me, referral. we do take it because if we don't, right. lawyers are involved, we have to do yeah. something yeah, yeah. Um, right. Yes, and, and the state expects us to do a certain amount, even if it looks like, geez, we're concerned about this. Yeah. Lots of times we still have to go put eyes on or make a, you know, try to get underneath. Can we really do this or but not? But the Medicare, people that overlook it, they don't differentiate between for-profit No. No, because there, you know, there probably are some not-for-profits, but in Vermont, we can't pick and choose. Yeah, but you're not for profit. Take. Right. So they, but they don't right. differentiate in their they data. Don't differentiate. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So. That doesn't um, look good for funding. It doesn't look good for funding. So we're actually, our, our board is talking more about how do we do things differently? How are we gonna be able to provide this care differently? Um, what types of partnerships can we have with college? Like uh, Central Vermont Medical Center has a, a great program um, where they have individuals that go from LNA to LPN to RN. We're not big enough to have something like that, but maybe we potentially can have a scholarship program where we connect with a school and we have a scholarship that there's a couple students that we kind of take from freshman to senior year um, and really kind of, you know, but we have to work with other partners potentially to get, get some of the, um, get some of what they need under their belt to, to meet the curriculum requirements. Do you so, get some state funding? Um, we get Medicaid primarily. That's not safe. Though. That's uh, well. That's through the state. Mm -hmm. We yeah. yeah. Then and some of the um, family and child help are um, grants through the state yeah. for those specific programs. Oh. Yeah. We do work with One Care Vermont in our health reform efforts. So we have a complex care coordinator position, and they help fund that position. And it's really to focus on those individuals that are high or highly complex in nature. Um, and that kind of overlaps with all of our programs. Right. Um, that pretty much um, supports some of the salary of that. So, but well, a lot of it is, you know, we really rely on development and fundraising, town funding, United Way, yeah. um, anywhere where we can potentially we can get some grants through some of the um, special funding that's happened to support certain efforts. So we just recently applied for one to support certain efforts um, for staff certifications and trainings and things to develop oh. skills, some stuff around recruitment and retention. There are yeah. a lot of parameters around that that oh. uh, yeah. So which what's your total budget? Our total budget is about 14 million. Yeah. And what was the budget? Last year, oh, uh, the well, it, it's actually come down some. Yes. Yeah, it was about fourteen and a half. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So. Oh. Okay. Anyone have any questions? Well, I remember last year this discussion was the same about it was, the funding. It's very yeah. 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 And I was concerned then. Yeah. <laughs> we talked to the fire department about the same issue. They run into the same. Right. Restrictions. Yep. Reductions. Right. Oh. Exactly. Yeah. The one thing that actually was positive for us that didn't happen that, that the state supported us on is, and I, you probably play it through the um, 
fire or maybe uh, EMS is uh, the provider tax, that Medicaid provider tax. Who has paid that? I don't remember. Through the, um, I thought some of the ambulance, but what it is, it, it was a program that started, or, or I shouldn't even say it was a program. It was somebody from the state can, you know, talk to us, some commissioner or whatever, and said, um, well, if you pay this provider tax, so what that is, is on, um, we get a bill from the state and it's a tax. They said, you pay this tax and what will happen is it's considered match money. And oh. when we pay your rates, we'll actually increase your rates every oh. year. And oh. you pay the tax and it goes back to you through rates. Well, that lasted about four years. And before you know it, you know, 12, 15 years later, the tax was out of half a million dollars and we weren't getting Medicaid rate increases. So this past legislative session, the governor signed on to actually eliminate the provider tax for home health agencies. So um, that was a half a million dollars to us. So that was a gift other than Medicare took it away. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and we're really happy about that because that's been something we have been advocating for. If we can't increase our rates, then why are we paying this tax? Because it was being used for other stuff. Oh. So, um, we were fortunate. We do know other survivors pay it, and certainly we doubt that we're going to be able to pay it too. Oh. oh, any questions? Yeah, since I'm, I'm new to this, and maybe for Zoe too, and I don't recall what the um, what what is the rough number that we put in front of the voters to to vote? Oh, for this. Yeah. What is it? It's, 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 okay, it's not it's not in it's not in here now. Roughly sixty five. Okay. Yeah. That was what it's doing. Oh, okay. Yeah. They're just advocating for their uh, no no no, I understand. Yeah. I it, 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 since it right, wasn't right. it wasn't in the document. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. So um, we hear you guys on the radio all the time. Yeah. <laughs> really? Seriously. Here. Here. You're, you're, you're public, your your public your public is good. Our federal delegation. Yeah. And, uh, now Bernie Sanders, at least, is on a committee that's health related. Um, it's really hard to get traction um, from a home health perspective. It's disappointing. I feel like we just need to watch in the DC and stream in front of something. <laughs> what relationship, if anything, do you have with CVMP or for the EVM Health Network? Um, there are primary referral source, but what else is the organization? I know that they're also facing staffing shortages, but I don't know about I don't know anything about how they work financially. I just, right. They seem like such a uh huge organization. I was mm -hmm. I was hoping that in the future there might be some way that you can benefit from them mm -hmm. because I'm sure that your work takes a huge load off. Um that their system is also overstressing. Right. Exactly. Like when when we say, geez, we have to limit our referrals, their hair expands on end <laughs> because now we're clogging up the system, right? Because right. now they have patients sure. that are sitting in the hospital that are non acute that they have to move and they can move them into the community. Exactly. Who's going to see them? And there is another home health agency, Ayata, which is statewide. Um, you know, which they can refer to whether they take the, they are a little bit more selective on the patients they take, but, um, you know, I think it just depends on where people live and the staff coverage they have as well, because they're statewide, so they're trying to cover the whole state, which is a little different than us just trying to cover more of a ter designated territory. I just think it, it would, you know, I, 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 I don't know enough to speak to this, but it would seem to make sense if, Somehow the UVM network is actually helped in some way. Yeah. Organization it makes sense for everybody, but they do have a home health agency in their network. Um, I think they have their struggles as well. Right. We've been all been very similar. So I'm not sure because I think because the whole organization is struggling, it's really hard. Um, yeah. So I think everybody's just kind of this stressed. Um yeah. The whole industry is in a crisis. Yeah, exactly. But I right. appreciate okay. your thoughts and we do stay pretty connected to them. And, and we have similar issues. Okay. Well, it's always impressive to 
hear about the work that you're doing okay. in our yeah. community. And we appreciate you taking the time to educate some of us or all of us. Now, is there somebody going to town meeting? Sometimes there is. Um, no. we, we should actually ensure okay. there is someone there to represent us. Okay, yeah. So, did you do in person last year? Or yes, we did. We did. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, figure that out. Just I, in case. I do have a couple things I just want to leave with you. There's sure. some materials on hospice and uh, uh, palliative care on the service. Okay. This um, palliative care is actually um, a poster. So if you have a place you want to post, yeah. it is in the service. Mm -hmm. And um, the phone number is in that. Okay. Right. Great. For town meeting, uh, just so you know, we did have a uh, an RN from CB Home Health and Hospice okay. here uh, a couple of weeks ago talking about their services in connection with a nonprofit here who uh, is interested in in getting some ARPA funding from, from oh. the town. So uh, if if you want to enlist her for outreach to town meeting, she right. might be amenable. What? Karen Clark. Oh yes, yeah, same. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Great. So I'm gonna leave this here. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you. Thanks for Thank you. Time. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, take care. Okay, so the next item on our agenda is discussing our updated guidance for American Rescue Plan at the Fund. Fund. So we have a printout of giving you everything that PLCD published. Yeah, so they want the, the money committed by March 31st. That's the just advising. Yeah. We yeah. have already previously discussed um, two options. Yeah. That we just didn't move on at the time, uh, which is we have the fire engine chassis purchase, yeah, and the Mack truck. The yeah. build costs we can't take the purchase of the truck because that was in the previous ARPA reporting period, but the build costs we can. They're the they are still in this current reporting period. Yeah. So the benefit of doing this, and this was our discussion before, is yeah. those items have been a charge to our capital reserve fund. Yeah. If we instead allocate the yeah. costs to ARPA, then we have now free costs in our capital reserve fund, which if you read through all the VLC, you saying this is what they're telling you to do, and yeah. we all know. Um, yeah. So we have freed those funds, which could then be used yeah. for the projects yeah. like the Town right. Touch and right. Ash Tree Management Program right. that could probably fit quite well um, with that the sum of money that those two purchases could um, free up in the capital reserve fund. So... Um, you know, all the other projects that we have are, are really ongoing um, that we've executed uh, quotes or con not really a contract, but we've, ex you know, kind of have contracted for like with RV Tech. All those mm -hmm. projects are, yeah. are underway mm -hmm. and likely will be completed before that March 31st time period anyway. <laughs> um, yeah. But they're already committed. We have signed documents for those. Those aren't a problem. Um, yeah. And then the only other piece, you know, we had spoken about the ash tree management project, them doing kind of a double. They've been averaging 30-ish thousand dollars over the last couple of years, um, doing kind of a, a double um, this year because of ARPA funds. So mm -hmm. the Risley of Roads Committee just asked if I could confirm that that still aligns with the select board's expectations because that's what they're planning to do. Um, but this is where we are. So if you, and then... If we allocate the fire engine chassis and the Mack truck, then of ARPA funds that are remaining, we have 58, just under $59,000 remaining. Some of the amounts of actual costs, of course, when they commit, or VTech gave us a quote, you know, exactly, could be minor up or down, um, but it's pretty close to, to where we'll end up. That that will all get trued up as final bills are paid. Um, so this is where we are. So. Mm -hmm. Really, up to the select board. So, it, just to make sure I understand this uh, spreadsheet here, the first tranche is stuff that we've already approved using ARPA funding for. What's the difference between the second grouping and the third grouping? The second grouping are costs that we've actually incurred. So, we okay. have two bills that have currently been charged to the capital reserve. Got it. That could yeah. be reclassified out of the capital right. reserve and reclassified as ARPA expenditures. And, and that would free up the funds mm -hmm. then in the capital reserve. And yeah. is that an all or nothing thing with each 
item, item, or could we charge a percentage of it to our but you know? We could charge a percentage, but I'm not sure what we would gain by doing that. Right. The whole idea is to try to use up all these art funds. Right. Well, yeah. I see that the reason I'm asking about that is I see that if we um, accept putting the act three management into ARPA, then that puts us in the negative and we'd have nothing to use to give to town. I would actually recommend that we not put, I only listed the ASHRAE management because this has been here. It's, yeah. it's really doesn't matter. ASHRAE management would either come out of capital reserve or come out of ARPA. If we free up more funds in capital reserve, mm -hmm. it's the same difference. Right. It's a shell game. Mm -hmm. um, I only left it on this list because that was something that we have previously discussed, yeah. but I'm not sure we're going to be really tight in um, committing those funds. Mm -hmm. It just based on the timing of when the, this project is done. So that's right. the reason why I've gone back to this fire engine chassis and the Mack truck right. so that we can instead free up the funds in the capital reserve and use those you lose use the capital reserve funds to fund the ash tree management mm -hmm. right. with the funds that ARPA has now reallocated and freed up in the capital reserve. Right. So it's the same difference. Right. Okay. Thank you. That's okay. Helpful. So the remaining funds are 58,000 if we take the truck out. Right. Yeah. That. Yeah. So you would have fifty-eight, correct? And right. Again, we're bringing up two hundred sixteen thousand in the right. capital reserve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I understand. So we do have money to give the nonprofit. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. The fifty thousand. Yeah. Right. Technically, you have the money that you freed up in the capital reserve as well. I mean, that this is yeah, a true. Lot decision true, true. You right. with your your right. rights of money. Right. So. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Sounds good. Good. Well, that's very helpfully presented. Thank you. Yeah. It would just be nice if we, so is the select board comfortable with us reassigning the, reclassifying these two items to the ARPA expenditures and thus? I think so. It makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah. The next, there's a reason why this discussion precedes the next agenda item, right. because I'm going to guess that we're going to use up the rest of it in the next discussion. That's right. So Indeed. then we're, well, I'm just, but then we're, Pretty yeah, we're close good. to being done with ARPA. Yeah. Um, and it's that's good. kind of my goal here. Yeah. Yeah. And if we're not done, then I'll go find other things that we can put to ARPA because right. yeah. I'd like no. us to get it reported no, I get here. It. I would love to be we're, right. we're out. We're right. done. Yeah, it's just you we make it reporting that we're not only committed, we're fully spent. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sounds good to me. Yeah, so so it's a, a common start. sense way to satisfy the ARPA requirements yeah. and free up our cap reserve. Well, and if you sure. went through all the BLCT, Documents. I read it, yeah. A lot of their concern is that a lot of towns have not reported that they've done anything. We at least have, of course, mm -hmm. um, that reported that we have. But this is their concern: is no, you have costs. Just yeah, yeah, have them. yeah. yeah. Go away. Yeah. 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 yeah, get it done, and then you you still have money. Yes. So, do you want the minutes to reflect that there was a consensus to assign the fire engine cost to the ARPA post? Do we need a motion for that. I don't think we need it. Motion, it's, no. it's a bookkeeping yeah. question. Basically, we aren't deciding yeah. to spend more money. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, because all these other things are yeah. kind of in the same category. Mm -hmm. So we're not going to make a vote on each thing. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's like no. yeah. I don't yeah. remember whether we voted on on these other things. No, we did. So we're, we're it's agreeing. a consensus. We're agreeing. We did yeah. vote on the mold remediation for the four corner schoolhouse, as I recall. We did do that. Yeah. A lot of these you did yeah. because they were yeah. quotes that I needed to accept or yeah. contracts that I needed to execute. Right. So we voted on them initially, but we didn't agree to put them as our expenditure. Okay, so they, you have previously approved that. Yeah, that's right. right. We we approved approved them. Them. We just stopped doing it too. Yeah. To move just, the costs out of the capital reserve and yeah. move them into our no, the category. That we're doing a shell game. No. <laughs> <laughs> Classifying okay. expenses exactly. okay. from the capital yes. to our this, 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 this is this is helpful, true. This is helpful and, for the minutes. And the reporter could be here and it could be on the front page. Yes. You know, right. <laughs> always play it back. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't say it either. <laughs> oh, okay. So we're done with that. Item. Yes. All right. So let's see. The next item is consideration of contributions to each monthly or non profits to the town ARPA funds. Yeah, we're on time. Okay. So there were four non profits that came in, as I remember. Um, so I see that we have represented one non profit. 
here in the town hall tonight. Um, so we had Twin Valley Senior Center, we had East Montpelier Trails, we had all together now, and we had East Montpelier Historical Society. So. And you heard from them the last meeting. I didn't necessarily specifically invite people to come. This was more right. or to continue sure. yeah. your discussion. So what is everyone? Everyone has some thoughts that gathered together around these four organizations. I have some myself, but I think we probably all do. Yeah. Um, so one by I, one, we need to. I had in an earlier meeting um, voiced my hesitation on putting a total amount that we should allocate. Yeah. That we should allocate. Yep. And I still would like to um, potentially allocate um, or recommend funds just based on each project rather than just um, recommending a cumulative number just to reach that goal. Okay, sure. Say whatever you like. Well, okay. Do you yeah. have any specific questions? Well, if you want to talk about each one. Well, yeah. I think we should. Yeah. I think we should get specific here. Yeah. So what do you want to get Twin Valley Senior Center, Senior Center for the paving of the parking well, lot? Uh, the, the issue that they brought up, it's all or nothing. Well, they said they could put it in a fund. And they said they need 50000 or if we didn't give it to them, they would not be able to do this. And that's what they're requesting. They, they couldn't they, even uh, raise a quarter of the cost right. from other sources. Exactly. So yeah. they either wanted 50000 or they were not going to do the payment. They were very um, specific on that when pressed. Or not even well, we asked them and they said they could put it in a fund and wait till they got more money. That's what I thought they said. I, I but they couldn't I, do it right now. I, I didn't get that. Oh, okay. We should clarify that maybe. Well, we're making, well, whatever. We're, we've got to make the decisions tonight. Yeah. Okay. Oh, all right. Sure. I mean, I, I that, thought that was pretty clear. Did, how did everybody else read that? Carl, did you? So. No, they can't do it without 50,000. I, I, so I read this thousand. for the minutes and I don't read. I mean, recall it either from my review or for the from the live meeting. They rounded it up because the estimate they had last year was forty thousand. Right, right, right. That's true. But they can't do it without the money. It's it's probably true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. They said, yeah. Okay, so that's a good point. What do you think about the trails? I. I think there's a lot of validity to giving something to the trails. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, it's used by a lot of, it's a, it's a drawing in Smokelia, it's used by a lot of um, individuals. Yeah. Okay. And all together now? You need a lot of money and it's really a valid organization. I I was totally ignorant on any that they even existed. Are we are we just going Scott's opinion? Yeah, I know. I'm I'm, no, I'm you, fine you, you keep that you can be asking me. I'm fine to ask each person. Oh what yeah, they please. Think, so we can have a uh, I'm discussion. trying to figure out whether it's going by each person going down all four or each thinking? person going down all four. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um valid organization. Um they're looking for a lot of money. Uh -huh. for the discussion. And then the uh the last one? Okay. historical design. Hysterical. Are they uh cupboards? Cupboards and ramp and yeah. stairs for the stage. Yeah. Again, that valid and seems like a lot of money for what they're trying to put together. Uh-huh. Okay. But you know, certainly valid and needed. Uh-huh. All right. It's not the end. It's not the end. It's, I shouldn't say a lot of money. You're asking for ten grand. Okay. So, did you put any thought in any of these? Yeah. Um, should I recuse myself since I only remember benefits from Twin Valley Senior Center? You know that. Why? Because I could say I want to give them a lot of money because it benefits my family. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Well, I can say I want to give them a lot of money because they walked the trail, which I did. Yeah. Right. Well, I, I don't think, think you have to. Did you get anything? Do you okay. get anything back from Twin Valley? Do they pay you? No. Do they pay any for your family members? No. Okay. I, just, I, I think, think you... that Twin Valley is pretty necessary organization, especially based on the demographics of Small Pillar. Mm -hmm. Um, will become more necessary. Um, it's important to support them, and yep. I haven't. Unfortunately, not being here last week, I guess I want to read more about the amount, the sixty-three thousand dollar amount for all together. Now, I just don't. Under, I, I'm reading this now. I admit. Okay, that's fine. And the trails, also, they're important, but um, so it's the estimate for the project is. Basically, construction materials. Well, they want to put a bridge in. It's fourteen five. They do have some money they could put towards it. The bridge, the bridge, the bridge is uh, construction materials plus some paid labor. labor. Oh, that was paid labor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Whereas mm -hmm. the Sparrow Farm boardwalk replacement that, that, that would be it. free labor. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right. You're comfortable with me moving on to Carl's? Yes. Okay, sir. Okay. Yeah, the Twin Valley Senior Center. I'm uncomfortable using fifty thousand uh dollars -huh. for a parking lot. I, um, oh, this, it, they 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 specifically said it's yeah, for the parking it's, lot. It's for yeah, for paving, paving, my, my whole point is they lot. want fifty grand, or they're not going to get a parking yeah. lot. Yeah. Okay, well, they're so not going to get a repaving. They already have the parking lot. Right. They're just a repaving. So. Oh, okay. Yes. It's clearly it's clearly it's full of problems. And then our conversation Except about by what. Your conversation was about either all or now. In that, that's what they told us. They, they, said they, particular project. they can't pay half of them. They right. said, oh, we'll give them $25,000. Well, that's only going to do half of them. They're not going to do that. They want to do the whole thing. They, and and they, they don't, don't have, have any money. They don't have another source lined up saying, right. uh, hey, I'll, I'll throw in a quarter of it. Yeah, or you, 10 or 20 or whatever. Right. Right. Yeah. They don't have any you money. 25, lined they're up. not paying. Right. right. So it's basically, we give them 40000 50000 and they do it, or we don't give them. We give them no money because it's a it's black or white. Right. Oh, okay. Seem like right. that was that was yeah. my that was right. my mention. Yeah. yeah. If we give them half the money, they still can't do it. Right. That's what the gist of it is. Right. And so, they wouldn't use it for something else if they. Well, no. If, I mean, we would specify how they use it, and I think we've asked people to not use the money for operational expenses, haven't we? This was their report. We asked. We, we, we did. They asked the money for specific. No, I think that, yeah, right. I mean, they asked for specific. Right. I see. And this was their specific. Okay. Right. It's clearly stated in the. Yeah. No, no, no. The specific project is paid. And, and that was a request. They could have requested something. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so that's East Montpelier, uh, that's Twin Valley Senior Center. Yeah. East Montpelier Trails is uh, an organization with. You know, long-standing work and uh, continuing to do excellent work in terms of acquiring and ma uh, new trails, maintaining trails, um, improving trails, and uh, I think a, a significant chunk to them would be appropriate. Uh, they indicated they had some money already, and we, mm -hmm. through other sources, give them some money each mm -hmm. year, but um, I don't know, maybe paying for the Mallory Brook Bridge, for example and letting them use their own funds or other funds for the Sparrow Farm Boardwalk replacement, just for example. Um, all together now is a big chunk of money. I'm curious to hear, we have a couple of representatives. I'm curious to hear, we were told about a go crowdsourced funding effort uh, last time. I'm curious to hear how much they've gotten in there. I'm also, I raised questions last time about giving money to a nonprofit to give to a, non nonprofit mm -hmm. and i'm curious um to know how we can use this potential gift to strengthen the nonprofit and i realize that there's so much overlap between the nonprofit and everybody else who's involved that from a practical point of view yeah altogether now is going to continue to be able to use that space but from a you know, management perspective we're giving town funds to a local organization. I'm wondering whether it would be prudent to say, you say there's a five-year lease right now for the nonprofit. Uh, I don't know when that started, when it runs out, but 
maybe extend it for another 10 years, for example, uh, just to um, just to show that this is something that the nonprofit is going to continue benefiting from and then provide a, a significant chunk of, of uh, what they uh, they need after other sources of, of contributions have come in. And the historical society, I think those are, uh, I think the ADA stuff in, in particular is is worthy, the, the ramp and the stairs um, to the uh, the stage and um, the cabinets. I mean, our, our history is worth preserving. So I'd be inclined to give them at least a significant chunk of the 10 time. Okay, so. What do you think? Okay, so the way I like to work on things like this is I like to either eliminate some or lead them to the top of the list. Mm -hmm. So looking at the hysterical society, historical society, we've already given them 30,000 bucks. So I'm like, forget it. Now you and think, I feel you like think about the um, the Four Corner Schoolhouse? Yeah, same. That's where they're building the cabinets. It's a different organization. Yeah, it's the same building. It's the same building. Yeah, right. right. Mm -hmm. The same building. We've already given them $30,000. So I'm thinking that that's enough. In, the, in my opinion. You know, I think uh, it, what's that? Sorry. Wait. That? Let me give my whole idea. I think the cabinets have to do with something with moving materials that might even be here to a permanent place for historical preservation. Yeah, the historical society said that they have no place to store three-dimensional objects right now. They can store papers somewhere, huh. but not three-dimensional objects. So I don't know if they have some somewhere that's like under people's beds uh, that they're going to be putting. Yeah, but really, I mean, we've given them 30,000 bucks. They got 30 something out of the state to do the mold remediation. Well, doesn't... how much did the historical society use the schoolhouse? I don't know. They're different organizations. So I'm the same building, the same building. It the would building be the cabinet building. in yeah. the old schoolhouse. Yeah. Yeah. It's the same building. Right. Whatever. Okay. They're different organizations. I'm just yeah. giving my opinion. But yeah. anyway. I think they are. Yeah. To separate them. Okay. Let's let's hear. They're this. still working on the same building. Okay. Oh, yeah. It doesn't matter. Okay. <laughs> I'm just gonna say yeah. I'm not feeling warm and fuzzy about giving them ten thousand mm. dollars. I think there's better uses of the money. All these other places are in the now, same town as. Now, Twin else. Valley Senior Center is unfortunate that we can't give them some money. I love the organization. Yeah. I, I love that place. Mm. I just don't know if our money is going to get. Where our money's going to go if we can't give them fifty thousand? I don't feel comfortable giving them the whole fifty thousand yeah. bucks. I just don't. I'd rather break up the money, give it to worthy organizations, two or three. But that means they can't. We can't give them the money because they're not going to be able to use it. And we unless we just decide to give them the whole fifty thousand. Do you want to invite them back? Because they're not. Again, I didn't reach out to these organizations and I specifically invite them to come in and talk to you again to answer any questions you may have tonight. So it's not a bad idea. It, it feels a bit unfair that they're not here to speak. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. drive in that parking lot a few days a week to take my mom to the Twin Valley Senior Center. I'm well aware of the potholes in that. Is, it, is it bad? Yes, it's bad. <laughs> and I can tell you so, what it looked like last. I did not but, go today, but last yeah. week after the snow. This is our money, and I, yeah. I I feel that we should be giving this to capital projects, yeah. things that are specific, yeah. rather than do the shell game. No, the shell game, though, the ARPA money is still going to wind up in the capital fund. I agree. And right. Right. But if you say that you're going to give them X for... Yes. It should Pay. be specific, and it should be East Montpelier residents gave... That wing of that building, whatever, or that parking lot. Yeah. So, we, okay. so I, therefore, I, I, yeah, I agree with that. I'm not sure why you're bringing it up now. What, what's your point? I'm, I'm, I'm totally agreeing because to, my point is, why bring them back? Because they might, um, when they hear our our objections to paying the whole fifty thousand for the parking lot, they yeah. might say, "Oh, we have this other capital project. Yeah. There's that shed." Off the parking lot that needs to be improved, or or well, we can't. Yeah, I think they're an important enough organization to give them a little bit more time yeah. and questioning. They're also in flux. I mean, I think that's right. An interim director okay. right now. So keep in mind when this request previously came, they had their full time director who since retired. Right. So I also think we're dealing with an organization that's kind of operating on volunteers right now. So they probably have not had the time to put into grants and you know yeah. seeking funding so 
All know, right. So just... fair enough. The trails incorporated. I really think that's a good use of ARPA money is to build a bridge. Mm -hmm. At least, even if you just gave them ten thousand, they still could do the bridge, but no less than ten thousand because, or we could give them the whole fourteen five, whatever. Mm -hmm. And the rest of it they can handle themselves. The Sparrow Farm Boardwalk, you know, volunteers, etc. But I think that somewhere around the fourteen five would be a good idea. It's not a huge amount of money, but it would help them a lot. Mm -hmm. And that's a great bridge that they they're going to build that they built over here on. Uh, we're uh, all on bobbling. Yeah. 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 Which will last. What's that? Which will Which last. last. Yeah. Steel. So, yeah. and then we have all together now a valid request, as Scott said, to pay, you know, give them some money towards the boiler, which was a huge a chunk of change for them, 30,000 bucks. So, I think that's um, a good request and a valid place to put money. Um, so, the thing is, if we want to sort out Twin Valley, we should ask them back and make a final decision then, but I don't want to wait too much longer. Mm -hmm. Does everyone feel like they want to ask Twin Valley back? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Sounds good. So my vote is get rid of the historical society, but I know that no one else agrees with me. Altogether now is valid East Pompeo Trails and Twin Valley we've got a bet out tomorrow. We're not. We're not. We're not going to allocate any funds tonight. I don't think we can. Right. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I said you didn't have to. Right. Just, this was just right. the next. No, no, it's right. a good idea you, to, you to discuss yeah. your. Right. Thoughts. No, no. no, 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 no I, I like the discussion. My, my only issue, and I understand it's a, it's a valuable asset in the community. This is the request. Yeah. This was their request. Yeah. It's a do-over. I have issues with you know. We can't well, do over, yeah. I, well, I, 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 I don't disagree with that. Man. I will remind you that um, when we first discussed this, I wanted to provide some specific guidance mm -hmm. to the nonprofits on what level of funding we were prepared to provide. And uh, you guys decided, no, yeah. we aren't going to do that. And so that gave them an incentive to shoot the move, right. if you will. So given that we didn't- Well, we did it, put a limit on, on the request of 50,000. Well, we had a conversation- oh, yeah. yeah. No, oh, no, 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 no. We had a conversation that yeah. in the in the open. Yeah. That we were talking with Carl and said maybe we should just allocate fifty thousand. Yeah. Anybody who was on the yeah. call on the, at the meeting would have heard where we were thinking right. about going. Right, 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 right. But, but we, we, we didn't, but we didn't in the say outreach. that in the No, and I, I objected to that. Yeah. And I don't want to sell I don't want to allocate money just for the purpose of allocating right. money. Yep. If we give thirty thousand, we have other areas. That the, that that are for the good of the town instead of just. So I'm saying it's our fault. We put out fuzzy guidance, yeah. and that we should give them a chance to come back and get yeah. another bite at the end. I will I just tell you that I did receive a number of calls for people that were confused about because they were expecting very specific, specific. guidance, yeah. correct? <laughs> and I didn't have any further clarity to offer them other than the posts that I did. So. In their defense, people were asking specific yep. questions. Well, we got some specific requests, so that's fine. Mm -hmm. uh, all we're trying to do is clarify Twin Valley because we all feel it's a worthy organization to give money to. Yes. So we don't want to just say no because we all are feeling bad about that. So we're giving them another chance. Mm -hmm. I, I agree. Yeah. I mean, I don't think it's a bad idea. Yeah. And I would like, as long as we have a couple of representatives from all together now, um, I, I asked some indirect questions of you earlier. I was wondering if you would mind uh, filling us in on those. Yes. Um, we didn't ask the 63, we asked the 30, and the other one Yeah. 63 was the total we needed to come yeah. for the building to come in compliance with the Department of Fire Safety code upgrades. Mm -hmm. um, and our uh, crowdsource funding is successful. I think uh, $9,000 as of uh, Saturday, I heard from that. And then I've received over $3,000 in checks this week. So I'm hoping that, you know, we can pay, you know, out of 60, if you were generous and gave us the 30, then hopefully we could get close to that 30 other that we need. And some of that 30 includes um, volunteer labor. We put labor costs for everything, and we're hoping 
that we can do some work parties to get that fire safe in the fire stuff done. It, so we were really realistic with its cost and also, so um, again, we are still raising funds, mm -hmm. I'm not asking you to help us do it all. You asked about the nonprofit's relationship with the building. Um, it is in flux, the ownership structure since Ellen and I owned it collectively. It's currently actually the ownership deed is an LLC and its purpose is to, for, to create affordable housing for the residents that live there and to support small businesses and the nonprofit's activities. So even if it's not owned directly by the nonprofit, it is there to sustain the nonprofit's activities. Without the building, the nonprofit's activities would be hard for us. In fact, there could be no summer camps programs and the seasonal events would be, you know, hard to, to relocate in terms of their organizing efforts. Okay. So, so the two building- questions, yes. sorry, Two questions uh, there, and I, I realized this when the last meeting, I was unclear on uh, the names. The nonprofit is called Altogether now, correct? Yes. And what's the LLC called that owns the building? Yes. Uh, Cherry Tree Hill Co-Housing Community. We restructured the ownership of the property in 2018 to be a condominium structure. So from being privately owned land, it is now uh, what we consider ourselves a co-housing, but uh, legally it's a condominium structure. So the land is held in common by the people who own the buildings. Okay. And so the intention of that is, again, to support community, support affordable housing, support you know the agriculture that happens there, community yeah. gardens and things like that. Yeah. So that's who currently holds the deed. So Cherry Tree Hill Co-Housing Community LLC yes. owns the land. Not, plus... No, the land is um, held by the association, the organization. I know it's the condominium structures are interesting, mm -hmm. and that's probably it's, but so the land is actually divided in its interest by the four units. Okay. 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 So the land isn't deeded to the, so each unit um, takes tax responsibility for a quarter of the land. Okay. It doesn't actually own it. Okay. It's a, it's an LLC uh, structure. It's an condominium structure that is a federal and a state structure. Is there a name for the owner of the land? Yeah. Well, the co-housing association owns it doesn't own the land the land now doesn't have a separate deed the deeds each unit okay. so that building okay. has a 25 percent value of the land okay 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 value okay but there's not a deed the deed so that's how the deed's written okay does that make sense um kind of i'm sure it makes sense uh whether so i like, understand it or not is, is right. less clear so but there's units yeah that each have a deed yeah the community art center is one of them. Yeah. And so a quarter of the land value is right. attributed to that okay. building. Okay. And so the Cherry Tree Hill Co-Housing Community LLC. Holds the deed for that building. Holds the deed for the building. Okay. And in its organizational documents, its charter or, or whatever, um, altogether now as a nonprofit is specifically mentioned as is part of its mission to promote? No. no. Okay. No. Okay. We got to like writing the LLC and it, its mission is affordable housing and to, to support community programming. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, what do you think of the thought of just extending the lease of APN in the building by 10 years? Is that I something? Yeah. And the lease was signed this um was it may and uh -huh. so it's not even been a year for that yeah. five-year lease okay. okay and um yes my intention is definitely to give it a long-term lease mm -hmm. the, um and um what else did i want to say about that i don't even that, know how costs of long-term well, leases you know I, I didn't mention it i can't really speak to it but part of the long-term goal <laughs> is that the nonprofit could potentially own the building okay, okay. that's the goal of ours Mm -hmm. But I can't, you know, promise you that that's going to happen. It's right. in negotiations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's in discussion okay. with the board okay. and with mm -hmm. if, the members of the elements. If we wanted to tell the taxpayers of East Montpelier that we gave this money on the condition that the ten, the lease be extended by 10 years, is that something that you could do in a fairly short time frame? Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. no. 
Yeah, I mean, as I said, this uh, the the land, the place is essential to the ongoing future um, activities of the nonprofit. Yeah, yeah, and I know how much of your heart and the hearts of uh, the people who are there are in the nonprofit. Yeah. 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 Okay. And think, yeah. So. And, and just so I understand what you said about the nine thousand and the three thousand dollars at first, uh, the three thousand in checks this month is that part of the nine thousand that was pledged? But that's on top. on top of it. Okay. Thank oh, you. so it's twelve. Okay. Okay. Good. Well. Congratulations. Okay. Yeah, since uh, beginning of the month. Yeah. Okay. We said the beginning of November. Mm -hmm. So a month. So we're not going to make a final decision on the money. Half the money tonight. Okay. Because we, I mean, we we can hear from Twin Valley again because. As a member of the public, can I say something about Twin Valley? Sure. Um, you know, paving is expensive and it takes a lot of repair, but throwing a lot of lake down on a road surface, levels of road surface, the drains to last a long time. Maybe when they come back. What are you saying, fill up potholes or slate? Yeah, re, re yeah. you know, use you, you, yeah, it's a lot less expensive than paving, and it lasts a lot longer in Vermont winters when it's well. The thing is that either you take the pavement up or you repave it. Oh, do they have pavement already? There's already pavement, yeah, yeah. but it's full of potholes. So, okay. I just thought if, if you took it out, and then but then the other thing is, I think you're probably moving, uh, so I mean, they use the wheel things on the pavement. Yeah, right? yeah. Yeah, the, I see a number the, of people walking in for canes. Right, in the wheel cane, yeah. whatever. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But that doesn't work in potholes. And if you fill a pothole with right. stone, right. you can stop right. it. It's not a smooth surface. It is an asphalt surface. I yeah, know. it's an old asphalt surface that's in this really region. bad. Okay. Yeah, I and that's not. not a good thing for older people to walk on. Blah, blah, blah. So, anyway. Okay. All right. So I think we should move on because we've got a lot of things to do. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thanks for Thank coming you. in. Appreciate it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the next thing that we have to consider is presentation at FY23 financial audit. You can make this real quick. It was a very clean audit. Essentially, okay. there were no issues noted. I have audit reports for all of you to take home and read. Okay. So. I, I would take I, I read Amy's last year that she took home. Yeah. Yeah. So I have all your reports. Okay. So pretty I much did done. not reprint the reports since you have hard copies yeah. here, but it's on the website. Yeah. Both in this meeting and in the yeah. final spot. I did, I did read their, their summary. So. And... Yeah. 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 It's yeah. so always good to read it. some of it, all of it. All of it. Um, so then we did the consideration of Avenue contract. We did the consideration of the fire protection task force, hundred dollars. Now we go to discussion FY twenty twenty five budget development. Giving you all a draft. Yep. Um, of the budget. Yep. Not really anything to get into detail tonight. I think the next meeting is when we'll have more because we don't have fire department numbers yet. Those should come next week. Um, uh, next week it's uh, Thursday, right? Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, it was well. It ordinarily would have been this Thursday. But yes, right. it on yeah, next but next week. Yeah. Um, what day is that? Thursday. Thursday. The fourteenth. No, I was going to say fourteenth. Yeah. Yeah. So really, I'm giving you all copies for you to review. Let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if you see anything. I'm still going through it. Um, every time I look at it, there's something I tweak. Um, yeah. Unemployment costs are going up that much. Because that's just because you're more employees. More yeah. employees in different pay structures. Yeah. Wow, that's going up a lot. Oh. Again, I'm still checking the numbers. And yeah. there's still information coming in, like some of the insurance information like that. I mm. just got the bill last week for the LCT. Yeah. So yeah. It's this time of year, it seems like every other day there's some additional yeah. little nugget that comes in an email that actually gives you clarity on the numbers. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. 
Huh. So there'll be an update for the next meeting? Or... Yeah, okay. We'll be seeing this until it's final. Every it's meeting, now. pretty much. Yeah. Would you mind um, put dating each draft that you give to us so we don't get them? I date the bio name. The bio name has the date at the end of it. Okay. Yep. Okay. I see that. Thank you. I have to do that for myself. Right. That's how I keep the copies. Right. I think it's confusing with PDFs the way that they have both a file name and then a title for the file, which can be different. Yeah. You'll have this a couple of days before. I can send this to you ahead of the next meeting. Yeah, I'm leaving Friday morning with my daughter in California. Um, but I kind of allocated it. I'm flying back that night. We're all flying back that night, but it'll be 3.30. I allocated a couple mm -hmm. hours. I'll be online in the meeting. Oh, you'll be you'll be in. Yeah, okay. I'll be in. I'll be in open. But I want. Oh, okay. I want to. And that's the next meeting. Sorry. That's the next meeting. Right. I want to. I'll read on the plane. I got yeah. My hours. So that's the eighteenth. Um. Yeah. Whatever that. That is the eighteenth. Yeah. 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 Great. This is a full time job just to do this. Okay. Mm -hmm. A lot of work mm -hmm. between the two of you. Between me. I'm sorry. Me. Oh, it's all I you. Do it's all you. Okay. Me. Michelle doesn't contribute. It's not her. Did she? She came in today, right? No. Oh, she did. She worked for us today. Okay. Any questions? No. There will be, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, you, you may put things in the notes. Well, you've already put things in the notes. Yeah, if I if I have information on where I got the number of yeah. why it's going to be Okay. Thank you. Okay, so that Just takes care of there. Mm -hmm. That takes care of 2025 budget development. Now we have discussion on 2024 town meeting warning. I think Carl said at the last meeting, this is something that you'll just see each time yep. as we get information. Um, for example, you all met with Central Vermont Home Health and Hospice tonight. Mm -hmm. So they're currently a yellow X where right. their number is. We now know that number is $6,500. Right. That will now get filled in. So each meeting, up until January 22nd, um, you will see this document come, come to life and get filled in with numbers. Mm -hmm. I, have a yeah. I have a question, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what is articles, um, what is the threshold or the minimum that um, would be put as an article versus the group donations? The funding. The funding. Well, What's we that? have to keep the funding requests the total under twenty five thousand. So there oh, isn't any minimum really. But we, what we've had to do in the past is kick out a big one. That that's why you broke down Green Mountain Transit in the fund request total um group, and then Article thirteen. You've got fourteen ninety nine in Article four thirteen, and under number eighteen. Under the group one, Seth, from the beginning? We get questions yeah, about that every year. Okay, 1366. That's my question. 13. You want to find that? You want to find that? The, so they're yeah. two separate programs. The the one is that's, a, that's separate is for uh, drive um, for truckers, basically, for people oh, yeah. who need it in the rural same, areas. So the, the, yeah. Every year. <laughs> and the one that's okay. in there is the... Um, the the budget uh, the the bus service the bus okay. service is much different than yeah. service going number, around picking up people yeah if this yeah. total number could be twenty seven thousand you would have no. taken the fourteen ninety nine and put it right in here if we can't go over twenty five thousand therefore that's why it's broken down that's why it's broken out my question is there are this, numbers broken out if this was twenty seven thousand total if if this if the, if the threshold if the threshold was twenty seven thousand we would not have to list it as a separate article. Is that correct? Okay, so anything, if you push your total to 25,000. I know. It, it's what okay. I'm saying. Okay. 
because it's only okay because it's only fourteen ninety nine. It seems if this was oh, never mind. I'm not going to repeat. No, you're saying it was included. I don't know why why you're bringing up the hypothetical. Do you Is want to raise it to twenty seven thousand? Yeah. Yeah, it's only fourteen ninety nine. So the history is, you know, when I moved to town at the turn of the century, it was ten thousand okay. dollars. Was the maximum amount that could be put on in an article okay. at town meeting and the town meeting floor. The idea was it was sort of a hybrid Australian ballot town meeting arrangement, and the big bucks would be decided by the people who uh, voted again, by Australian right. ballot. And because of increased demand, then okay. at some point in the first decade of this century, the, the ceiling was raised to $25,000. And even so, some of the bigger items have been progressively reduced okay. from there because uh, otherwise it exceeds $25,000. Okay. So if we want to raise that again, then the way to do it is to talk to our town meeting moderator okay. and uh, Oh, Michael. Oh, Michael. And uh, okay. And bring it before the voters and say we want to raise the twenty five thousand to twenty seven thousand dollars. Okay, so I thought of a way to keep that. I'm not happy. I'm just no, no. curious why you put the fourteen ninety nine back in the funding request. You could <laughs> and take something else out, so you keep it below the twenty five thousand. Yeah, that's good. Cool. If you push it over twenty five thousand, you can't change it on the floor. Yeah, yeah. Because the reason you have this discussion yeah. time, you can change each item if you want to. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry to waste your time. There is one additional request. The Energy Committee asked about having approximately three minutes of town meeting for a brief introduction of their work. They would like to use that time to discuss the enhanced energy plan that is under development, alluding to future public input sessions, and also to mention the critical energy aspects of the town garage project. Yeah, so Article 15 is now uh, in this draft to transact any other business that may properly come before the meeting. Yes. And if I recall correctly, then miscellaneous things like um, three minutes to the Energy Committee have been considered under Article 15 in the past. Or it could be as a report. It could be a separate article. No, Article 15. Oh, cool. yeah. the reports, they could have a little report mm -hmm. talk about that. Well, that's, that's a good point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we don't have to craft a separate article for the energy plan. Yeah, yeah the the so article two is, is the town officers. So that traditionally been the select board reports. Yeah, uh, but we've asked for people to give reports, but no one ever does. Uh huh. But are they town officers? I guess mm -hmm. that's kind of a loose term as far as the energy committee goes. Yeah. Are they town officers? We could see some of our time to the energy committee if we wanted to. Well, yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. 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 We could say, hey, let's hear a report from the right. town energy group. Yeah. You know? Does that make sense to the moderator that the energy committee could also go under Article 2 to hear the reports of several town officers and to act thereon? It does. Okay. It does make sense to me. Yeah. Okay. So that's okay. okay. So is there anything else we need to discuss on the town warning? Do you have any more hypothetical situations you'd like to talk? No, I don't think we need to talk about Article 13 again. I think we it. Uh, that's, okay. that's always a confusing, everyone always asks about No, that. no, uh, yeah, I'm just curious because it's 1499. Yeah, right. So I think we should, yeah, we should kick out community connections and put that in this place. I agree. <laughs> okay. So, is there, is there any more discussion about the town meeting warning, pertinent or not? <laughs> not, not from my lips. Are you calling for impertinent discussion? <laughs> uh, okay. We have warrants, and I've already reviewed them and signed them, so I will pass it around. Here you go. Okay. Thank you. And we have the town administrative report. So I put the update for the town garage project in this, um, mm -hmm. just letting the select board know that the responses yep. from the RFP are due on December 15th at 4 p.m. And the max number of responses we will receive is eight because we had eight firms attend the site visit and attending the site visit is a requirement to submit a proposal. Um, that Seth and John have been leading that effort and they are currently in the process of discussing with Kathleen Jen um, the potential to also do an RFP for an owner's representative or project manager to 
kind of oversee this project for the town. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of questions asked at the site visit uh, and components of the project that are the owners will need to facilitate and coordinate. Uh -huh. And so the question became, who is doing that? Right. Um, and in my experience, it is very helpful to have a, someone overseeing your project anyway, especially of this nature. And we simply don't have the capacity in town staff or someone to do that. Uh, Chase and Chase, I've been communicating with, we need a boundary line adjustment. Mm -hmm. So they've given just a, it's a rough estimate, but just an idea of maybe 5,500 to 6,500 to survey the properties and then do the boundary line adjustment sometime in the spring, um, which hopefully we will have a design firm on board at that time. And we'll more definitively know where the siting of the building would be. Right now it's more of a kind of guesstimate of standing on the site. So I think it would be helpful to know more precisely where we think the building would be prior to doing the boundary line adjustment. Okay. And yep. Jason Chase agreed with me as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had one permit application since last meeting, a home office, a 20 by 24 structure, uh, given me the future meeting schedule, which has the fire department meeting mm -hmm. on December 14th highlighted. That's it. Sorry, that's all good. Good. Okay. And we got that. We don't have any other business. Do we have any other business? You just no, I just came to catch the end of the. Um, 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 draft uh, one, and I did. You have a copy. Good time. Of the, well, it's actually not one. But I'm, well, we haven't made any drastic changes to it yet. There certainly has been. There's been some discussion about making changes. There's been discussion about making changes to the town in one by one of the members. Uh huh. <laughs> Do we, do we discuss the attire of the town moderator, or is that, up, or is that totally up to the town moderator's discretion? You know, God, if you want to delve into some details, that's fine. I don't know. You know, obviously, you're very detail oriented. I'm not. <laughs> I am not detail oriented. That, that is, oh, that that is to my detriment. I am not. <laughs> I wish I was more. Oh well, you certainly were on the fourteen ninety nine. <laughs> or 59 whatever it was. <laughs> that was poor. Put that. That was poor. Article 13. Oh, okay. Okay. So is there anything else? Walk, but... mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the... Do you, do you have any comments on the... I'm just trying to remember... Just, like, just trying to remember... This would help. On the draft, there was something that got left out because... Oh, yeah. I used a... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Prior sweeping yeah. COVID, but it looks like everything was in, in here now. Article one and two. Yeah, that was a mess up. No, no, we just came up with that on the ground. Yeah. So that I think that was those were the two things that the first draft, maybe even the second draft, hadn't put in. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, it's a good template to use. Yes, I don't usually go back to a point graph. I usually go back fine. Yeah. I move to adjourn. A second. All those in favor, please say aye. Hey. Aye. aye. aye.